moving on. This brings us to the semi-automatics. These weapons are unique in that they do not fire the way that typical shooters do. Um, so I'll address each of these individually. Uh, the L3 and H3 work in about the same way. They, if you press ZR one time, they will fire a three-shot burst. One, two, three. Um, and so each one of those shots is going to do uh, 29 damage. There we go. I was able to get it for you. So that means that even if you hit the full three-shot burst, you are going to need another shot to be able to splat them. A lot of the time, you're not going to hit the three-shot burst. A lot of the time, you're just going to hit two. But as long as you can hit two, it doesn't really make a huge difference. You just have to hit two the next time. Um, so the main weapon is definitely pretty lackluster for combat with the L3. Um, you definitely need to be keeping your distance. But it's at least accurate. And you know, you know, as long as you hit the shots, that you're going to do enough damage to splat after that second shot. Um... So it's still going to be a little bit better in this regard than something like the Nova. And one advantage is that it gets the best special in the game. It gets the Crab Tank. And as a painting weapon, the L3 is actually a bit better equipped to farm for this than the Splattershot Pro. Uh, so for its niche as the mid-range crab weapon, which unfortunately... Uh, it's kind of beaten out by the, the splash matic anyway, since it has burst bombs. Um, it is actually, you know, something that has a small, probably not going to be seen use case. The curling bomb is not phenomenal for it. Um, the mobility is nice, I guess. But for a weapon that's going to be checking its corners as aggressively as this is, moving up quickly is often not its MO. And it doesn't give it any extra poking power outside of the main weapon's range. So unless you have a crab tank, you're not going to be able to contest anything with longer range than you. And there are a lot of things that might have longer range than you on any given game. Um, I wouldn't feel comfortable at all trying to fight with something like, you know, a Nautilus, with any kind of backline weapon, uh, with even something like a squeezer. Um, if you try to go up against the 52 gal that has a wall, you're going to have a lot of trouble. And one of the things that really dooms this weapon in the current meta is its lack of object damage. Its DPS is really pretty miserable because it has to hit these three-shot bursts. And so trying to put this thing on, say, the Rainmaker shield isn't going to be very effective. But what really sinks it is the object damage against the Crab Tank. Because the Crab Tank is something that's really important to shred in this game. And this is just not going to do a good job of it without its own Crab Tank. Um, the curling bomb, it is a lethal bomb that you could launch at it, but that necessitates the curling bomb actually landing, um, which it might not do if there's something in the way, if it just bounces off, or if the player sees it coming and moves. So, one of the least useful combat subs in the game, despite it being a lethal bomb, um, and a uh, bomb is something this, this weapon could sorely use. Um, it was a lot more capable of playing a little bit more aggressively in the midline roll with something like a burst bomb and the inkjet that it had in Splatoon 2. It saw a good amount of use, especially in Japanese play with that kit. But uh, this one, it's kind of a one-trick pony. You're, use you're using this primarily to farm for your special, get your crab tank, and maybe apply some mid-range zoning pressure in the meantime. So I'm using my mobility to get over here onto the left-hand side where I have this angle where the E-leaders can have trouble hitting me and I can control some of the back of the zone. You can see the E-leaders trying to pay a lot of attention to me here um, to keep me off of their teammates. They do eventually find an angle there, unfortunately. I was a little bit too obvious about that movement. Um, but I'm trying to get into a position where I can be safe from the E-leader without having to poke at it because I can't poke at it. And while, you know, farming for special, but also putting some kind of pressure on the enemy team so they can, you know, they don't just get on my front line for free without me having any say in it. Um, it is a difficult task. 
And I might have to pop this tank just to stay alive. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Shot that was supposed to be an explosive shot ended up being a curling bomb. Uh, so unlike the splash matic which that would have been a burst bomb that would have actually done some decent damage and potentially comboed, uh, nothing doing here. So, let's try and paint a little bit. We can probably get zone for this. I cannot believe the zone is not capped. There we go. They're getting into our left-hand side, and I don't feel like we have recognized this. Teammate goes in and takes one out. Very good. We can probably finish this off if they push. And we need to be a little bit careful here. Okay, they backed up to uh, pop that big bubbler there instead of going for us. Respecting our range. We'll probably get Crab Tank here, and then let's try and get a bit this on top. Ooh. That was a good Trizuka shot that stopped me from getting into a position where I wanted to Crab Tank. So we're just going to Crab Tank on our way out. Here, we're gonna get this charged. Where's the leader? Yeah, we probably don't need to pop the crab tank here. We can probably actually get this across. Eh, maybe not. We've got too many players on the right hand side here. I think I'm gonna use the crab tank to wall out the rest of the team while my team takes that fight. It's a lot of damage I was able to do there. Unfortunately, no splat, but we should be able to keep zone for that. I was keeping two of them back. Almost made it out of that, actually. I'm surprised. Um, but uh, we'll keep the zone for a little bit longer, but we're probably going to lose it here. The reflux being able to paint it. Well, let's see if we can get it back. Trizuka has got it out for me here. You can see one of the, the awkward things about this weapon class is that the burst fire shots make it so that you have a lot of downtime. If you, especially if you're not getting anything out of that shot, uh, you can't just like hit your feet and then move. You have to fire your whole three shot burst in order to paint your feet with anything other than the curling bomb. And so that is one way in which the curling bomb has utility in making up for that slowness. Uh, but curling bombs are also very ink hungry. And so you can't just use those in every situation that you find yourself in, because uh, you never know when you might need it a little bit more for something else. And it's damaged and they don't want to push me because I've got a slosher coming in. We're very close to crab tanks, so we want to make sure we stay alive here. There we go. We're going to just roll this out to here and try and get this angle. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I was forced to use too much of it off the zone. Leader should get me there. They missed. Oh, dear. I need to jump out. got someone on plat, so maybe we can sneak the zone here while they're not paying as much attention. Wishful thinking. Yeah, unfortunately, that's also kind of what I expect there. Not a weapon you're seeing an awful lot in the meta right now. We're going to switch off now to the H3 nozzle nose, which is seeing even less play. Now, the H3 has a very similar way of firing, three-shot bursts. One advantage of this weapon is that if you hit all three shots, it will actually splat but it is significantly slower on that three-shot burst. You can see here that the rate at which I am able to fire this is a lot slower than the rate at which I'm able to fire this. So it's even more aim intensive than the L3 already was. Um, it is very satisfying to hit those three shots, but there's really nothing else here for this weapon. This kit is abysmal. Um, it needs some kind of long-range poke, some kind of reliable damage to maybe follow up on shots that it missed. It does not have that in the point sensor. It needs a special that can be used kind of passively, since it's going to be sitting back and playing its range so much. 
and that is not what the tacticaler is. The tacticaler is a special which, when used, requires uh, a team to push in pretty aggressively to get benefit from it. It's a very slow weapon in general, um, so I mean you could say that the move speed helps it a little bit, but it's not going to be moving around a lot. It's going to be a little bit more stationary in the way that a lot of long range shooters are. So this weapon just does not have a lot going for it. It is considered by a lot to be one of the bottom tiers. The main weapon is definitely salvageable with a better kit, um, with a more supportive kit like it had in the H3D in Splatoon 2. Um, that weapon was meta for a, a bit of time when uh, you wanted the long range pressure on a weapon that could get armor. And it also had good bombs to poke with in that, that game. It's really been done dirty by the, uh, the kit in this one here. Um, so we don't even have, you know, the extra mobility from the curling bomb to work with. We've just got to make do with making sure we paint a line. Okay. Fairly passive comps on both sides. Uh, they're going to have a couple of juniors, and then we're going to have a junior and two midliners. Uh, but they've got double backline, and our E-leader is probably going to have a field day with that, so that's going to be nice for us. Uh, oh, wow, immediately gets... Wow, let's go. I love it when I don't have to do things. All right, so I guess the junior's going to take over. I, I would rather have the junior pushing up, because I am definitely not the weapon to be pushing up from this position. Hard to hit up over that angle. There is someone behind us, which we're going to be able to get rid of. But from there, it's not the simplest matter to get up and over the top. Um, this is a situation where you really want our junior playing a little bit more like a frontliner. Just so that... Oh, shoot. Hello. Why did I push in this close? I've made a mistake. We want our junior pushing in a little bit more like a frontliner here because nobody else is a frontliner. By any description. There we go. Cool. So it's just the charger. Just need to spot them out. And we'll be safe. The charger's right there. Oh, they're dropping left. We're gonna flank guard here. This is something that uh, weapons like the H3 are actually really good at. Because um, they've got the range to be able to stop someone across open sight lines like that. That's not to say it's the, my first choice for a flank guard kind of weapon, but it is a role that the weapon can play. So now we're going to waste this entire tactical or sitting and waiting. Because, oh goodness, they got three on tower. All right. Well, uh, that didn't work. Okay. Ah, I could have hit a lot of those shots. How high up are they? I like this. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, thought I would. Well, we're able to survive, and there's only one player up. We traded them there. So now they kind of have to make a blind run at us. It's insane that I haven't been shot from the left yet for spending that long looking at the charger, but they have a lot of other things that they're going to be focusing on in that moment. So that was a bit of an insane position to take on an H3, but again, with no front line, if I can at least keep them off the tower for a little while, then... Uh, that's about all I need to do. So, good job to my teammates for sure. But we held our own. Maybe a little bit of that, a uh, little bit of that sticks practice coming in. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely the reason that that went as well as it did. And this brings us to our last of the semi-autos, and that is the dot dot dot. Come on, let me, let me get there. Squeezer. 
Starting with the basic mechanics of the squeezer. Uh, the squeezer actually has two different firing modes. Um, so even though it looks like it's just firing normal shots, something you'll notice is that the first shot is going to go a lot further. And then you're going to get shots that only go about this far. So this little splat right here is your first shot. And what we'll show here is that that first shot does 38 damage. But then if we start firing the rapid fire shots afterwards, those are doing 30. So the first shot actually does a lot more damage and goes a lot further and so the way that you're going to play this in combat is you're going to mash the fire button. You are going to press it repeatedly so that you get this three shot instead of getting this four shot. So unfortunately you do have to mash and uh, something that you'll see if I, you know, just stand here mashing is that my controller is jittering a little bit. Like, this is something where if I'm going as fast as I possibly can, it will compromise me a little bit because I'm not great at keeping it steady while also mashing. Um, this mash is also something that tends to cause hand problems for people. Um, this is something where if you're going to play this weapon, make sure that you are doing hand stretches before you play it. Um, especially for any significant length of time. Because this is something that can do things like give people carpal tunnel or tendonitis. Um, and it's something that isn't super accessible to people with physical disabilities or injuries. So um, definitely not a huge fan of the way that that mechanic ends up working uh, in practice, this and with brushes. Um, and I hope that Nintendo kind of reconsider the way that this is designed in future. Because while it's kind of an interesting idea for a mechanic, the, in practice, physically, this tends to restrict some people from being able to play it as effectively. But, assuming that we have the physical capability to be able to play this, and we're not hurting ourselves doing so, um, basically, you want to be using the tap shots for fighting and the rapid-fire shots for painting. Because uh, the, the tap shots here paint about like that, which is definitely not fantastic. Um, but if we just do rapid fire shots, that's a lot smoother. Um, and so while it doesn't go quite as far, you know, leaving that much in the middle unpainted leaves a lot to be desired. In a pinch, the rapid fire shots are not bad for combat. That's hardly a terrible kill time in, all, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so if you just end up in a position where you're, maybe you're painting and someone sneaks, sneaks up on you, you can go back to tapping, but if it's going to throw your aim off, it's not awful to just pull that out, but going from a three shot to a four shot is definitely a big deal. And the more comfortable you get with the tap shots, the more you're just going to want to use them for every fight. It's not quite splatter shots kill time, you know, a splatter shot being another three shot weapon that we could compare it to, but being this much longer range than it, this weapon is kind of disgusting in fights. Really, really, really good. Squeezer is definitely the strongest of the semi-autos. This weapon had an absolute reign of terror in Splatoon 2, where it had the bubble pop combo. Um, this weapon is significantly nerfed from there by primarily the splash wall. Trizuka is not a bad special for it at all. Um, it's kind of really valuable from the positions that the Squeezer is going to want to try taking. But uh, it's also not in a great place right now in the metagame just because it's not that useful for shredding crab tanks um you're standing still for too long while you fire it and the crab's going to be able to draw a bead on you during that time so at most you're going to be able to fire one shot and then you got to run away but uh the splash wall really makes this a little bit bothersome because it would be much better if it had a way to poke at a longer distance at something than uh if it didn't have to push all the way into its weapon's range to be effective. But uh, the main weapon itself is just insane. Um, if you can get the hang of it. So just very, very dangerous weapon. Uh, this is a weapon that can, like, shark people at very long distances. It can sit this far away from, say, this target. And just pop out of the ink. 
and get a very fast kill time on that player, despite the fact that they really didn't blunder that far into enemy ink at all. Um, and that's something this weapon is really, really good at doing. This weapon is also a niche threat to backliners, where if it knows a backliner's position and they don't know where it is, it has the range to often be able to hit up over ledges and attack those positions when the backliner isn't looking. Um, I'm not saying you should run head-on against an E-leader, but if you do know where the E-leader's about to pop up, you know, if they're over that, that ledge over there, and you manage to sneak into a position like this, this is somewhere where you could put some pressure on them and maybe threaten their... Okay, maybe not if the wall's this high, but um, this is somewhere where you could be a danger to them and that uh, they have to watch out for. You're also very good at pushing into positions where frontline weapons are going to be want to are going to want to be pushing at you, because you are going to be able to beat them with your range and with having not that much slower of a kill time than they do. So lots of advantages to the main weapon if you're able to physically play it. Unfortunately, it is one of the few aspects of this game that's not that accessible, uh, and I hope that in future Nintendo reconsiders the requirement that players mash, um, so that people are able to play it more effectively without uh, needing certain physical capabilities. Okay, lots of range on this comp. We might be able to follow up with our range blaster a little bit. Not a lot of frontline pressure. I'm going to have to be playing fairly aggressively here. Um, but we'll kind of see what the range blaster does too. I'm going to try and get a wall out here so we can take some space... Especially since there's an E-leader on the map, having something that's going to stop at least one shot is going to be helpful. I don't want to spend too long over here. Uh, this is a place where the E-leader is clearly watching, so let's try and rotate over to where we can get a little bit more uh, alone time with their frontliners. <laughs> Ran out of ink, otherwise I could have pursued that a little bit more. The leader has shifted over, so I'm going to shift back. Get this sent back and also use this to get over the wavebreaker shot gonna paint a little bit here. That's a lot of wave breaking going on in mid. I'm not a fan of breaking the waves like that. Leave them intact, please. Try and get a Zooka shot across the way. This is gonna be really dangerous for the enemy team on such an open map like this. Boom. Got him. And we can keep a wall out in front to keep ourselves safe from the E-leader and keep the enemy team boxed in a little bit. So that's a little bit hard to see. You did not know I was here. Unfortunately, I missed all of my shots. Okay. Well, I'm glad my teammate took care of that, because I didn't want to win dinner. I was able to trade back on the way out, which is nice, although, you know, you never like to get uh, splatted right next to your teammate like that. Usually, uh, if you take an off angle, you can avoid that sort of situation. Um, can I hit these shots? I don't want to try and hit these shots. I just want to get down before anybody, anybody sees me. They're really trying to paint this up incredibly... Well, this is going to go on me. I'm going to have to back up. I still probably beat them. Ah, oh, darn. I think I missed a shot. If I didn't miss even one shot there, I'd probably win that. Because I, I do, I'm only a three-shot weapon. Um, they have to hit five. So... It's not the worst fight to take, but... I definitely probably should have uh, been rotating a little bit sooner so that I could have an impact on the tower push here. Okay. Um, okay, they traded. Not much I was going to be able to do otherwise. Just kind of play safe around this corner here. Teammate took him out anyway. Uh, let's see if we can zoop the E-leader here. I want them to stand still for long enough that I can get a shot off. Uh, no, not quite. Get some paint over here. I'm not going to try and push up on the platform with the tower. They're going to get pushed back soon anyway. And I need to keep my range. Let's have this out here. And we're still going for it. Throw this out over here. Oh my goodness. That was, uh... Me not being used to the squeezer, and that's about all it was. Uh, this is probably not the best angle to use this from, yeah. I realized right as they were going down, like, mm, I'm not going to be able to hit this, am I? Ooh, if I can get up here, this is going to be really annoying. 
play there already up there. Let's just get on tower here, especially since uh, nobody else riding it. Oh no. Being marked doesn't help that situation at all. This might be a little unsafe. We'll see. Yeah, there's a bomb thrown in that direction, but we're safe for now. And that splatter shot cannot push me. I have much too much range for that. And there it is, game. Looked like they had to uh, jump back to try and defend the tower push. So they didn't stay in mid with me. And there's that final score line. So thank you so much for watching uh, Weapon Select Semi-Autos. Um, sorry we had to split this apart from the long-range shooters. I know a lot of people have been waiting for these weapons, but uh, it just ended up being a really long video, and uh, better to have that in two separate sections so that it's easier to find what you're looking for. Catch you next time.